Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and I am the owner and artist here at 825 Designs. It has been a New York minute, uh, like a long time since I've posted on the channel because I have been going bonkers over on TikTok. It has been such a fun experience. I have been building up a community and when I was trying to film content for the community, I realized that I cannot achieve that goal in a one minute video. So here you are at my YouTube channel watching this tutorial. And that tutorial is about how to utilize Cricut Party Foil. And Cricut Party Foil is primarily for like decorations. I don't know if you can see that, but it's primarily for decorating, creating cool streamers and custom pieces for your party or event. And it has been blowing up in primarily the tumbler cup arena. Um, I figured out how to use the product for something that I'm going to be releasing this month in my shop at 825 Designs. And then I realized, you know what, I'm gonna share the wealth and I'm gonna show you guys tips and tricks and ideas and things that you can do with this stuff in the form of making your own glitter. And this is a great way for you to make custom pieces to add that one little extra bit of mm, to your products. And now, and also too, just to give you guys a huge disclaimer, though this product is by Cricut, I am a silhouette girl. I am going to be using the Silhouette Design Studio. I am going to do a little mock cut on my cam uh, Silhouette Portrait. I also have a Silhouette Cameo 4. So, if you're watching this and you're a Cricut user, there's going to be a different way that you're going to do this. So hopefully you can get kind of an idea and grab, the, and grab some of the tips and tricks for you then to translate it into a Cricut working environment with the Cricut machine and the, and the program that you use for Cricut. So the um, party foil comes with two types of sheets. The two sheets are two um, types of, so you get a solid metallic color uh, like this cool blue and then you get a solid glittery holographic -y color of that um, of that particular set so you get them like this and then I cut these down to 12 by 12 just for easy storage for my particular setup but they come in long sheets like you get them in 12 inches wide by whoa, let's see here 48 inches long so you can actually, if you want to cut them down, you can create four sheets of 12 by 12 for your Cricut or for your Cameo 4. Um, if you're working with a silhouette portrait, it's going to be eight inches by 12 inches. So honestly, trust, you will be able to maximize every inch of this material. And let me show you a couple of things that I've discovered along the way that has helped me really maximize and utilize this stuff. Alrighty, welcome to the computer screen. Um, I have here an image that I took off of the internet. Where I get my images, um, I usually go into Pinterest and I look, type out whatever it is that I wanna do. Um, I type in Halloween silhouette. I type in silhouettes because I want black and white images. Black and white images are going to be the best in how you can achieve a really good quality glitter piece. Um, you, things to be leery of. You want to be leery of things that are um, that have like a fine. Here, let me pull you through. You want to be leery of things that have like a fine like a fine web like this because if you want to make your pieces on the small side this isn't gonna be what you want the bat the skull uh this these ghosts are perfect you want it to be as solid as you possibly can so you're not dealing with the hiccups that would come in trying to cut small details so i am gonna just go ahead and save this image onto my screen here and I'll bring you guys back a little bit and once we're in silhouette I'm going to go ahead and use this zombie as an example I feel like this zombie guy is going to be perfect when it comes to um, having a nice solid uh, image to cut 
Um, in, in the portrait studio, I'm gonna come over here to the trace tool. I'm going to trace the uh, image of what I want. Um, you can play around with the threshold if you want to. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the threshold helps give you a little bit more of a solid line. Um, once you are done, you can go ahead and trace the, uh, trace the item, move the picture out of the way, select the item, and then I like to change the color and fill it in. So now I have my black zombie, the image I just put off screen so it's not in my way. And now that I have this image, it is this image taken from traced is three inches by two inches. The best advice I can give you is think about how you want to utilize this little custom glitter that you want to make. Um, if you're going to put it in a tumbler cup, I would recommend going either a half inch or 0 0.60. Um, if you are using it in like a shaker keychain or a foam grip, or if you just want to include it in a package to kind of help with your, um, your brand, um, I would say go a little bit on the larger side. Like this is an inch right here. This bad boy right here is an inch. It is one inch by 0.587 inches. And that actually is, is ballpark right there. Like I would probably go about around the three quarter inch wise uh, size. It's just easier to cut, it's easier to weed. It's just, it's a, so much easier. If you want something super teeny tiny, you're gonna deal with a heartache of a lot, of losing a lot of material. Because if you don't have a sharp blade, if you don't have um, a really good stick on your mat, it will lift and it will drag and it will, I've had, I'll say I've had my fair share of wasting. I've probably officially wasted like a 12 by 12 sheet of paper of, I'm sorry, of the party foil because of all of the mess ups that I've had. And to show you what I'm talking about, here is an excellent example. I cut this last night. This is me not paying attention and really properly making sure that it goes down all the way. And I made these little bats for a product that I'm creating. And this little bat here is going to be the perfect size for what I want it, for what I'm going to be using it for. And then I've done pumpkins and ghosts and moons and I have some vampire teeth down here. So be mindful of how big your pieces are just for your sanity, primarily your sanity. So I'm gonna make these guys just a little bit larger because it's gonna be kind of the focal point of what I wanna do in my piece. Now, if you are familiar with Silhouette and the program, I'm going to multiply this several times. I am utilizing the Silhouette Portrait because that cutie is right next to me here at the desk. So that's my setup. That's where my portrait is located. There's my Cameo 4. And then I'm just gonna come over here back to the computer and we'll show, I'll show you how I go through the process of getting it duplicated and fit in the area of what I wanna fit it on, my eight by 12 sheet. So I've got my item selected. I'm gonna go up here to object. I'm going to replicate and I'm gonna come down here to row of three or row of four, or you can use the cute little shortcuts that are right next to it and I'm going to duplicate. And I'm gonna do that a couple of times until I go across the board here for the full eight inches. Or what you can do is I've had my fair share of, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a small example because the cut, um, and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just space these out a little bit because I don't want them one right on top of each other because I've noticed as well that um, if your blade isn't hundred isn't the sharpest it can possibly be, it will lift and it will actually bend some of the glitter pieces. So if you space it out ever so slightly, I'm gonna come up here to this uh, spacing tool and I'm gonna just e space horizontal. I'm just gonna even it out to where they're spread out just a little bit more. Um, if you're still not happy with that, you can go ahead and adjust it the way you want to, but I'm pretty satisfied. Um, Okay, I'll go a little bit farther. You convinced me, you convinced me. Okay, and so now that I have my row, I'm gonna go ahead and group these kids together because I'm now going to create columns. And so I'm gonna to go to object, 
I'm gonna go to replicate, and then I'm gonna scroll down here to column of three or column of four. Column of three is, I think will be enough for what I wanna do right now. I'm gonna go ahead and bring these down. And I also pay attention to the squares here on my grid. So I notice that I'm gonna be utilizing at least four inches of the material for this particular piece. Or if I really wanna scrunch it up and really maximize, I'll go ahead and do three. But honestly, give yourself about a half an inch around your piece because it really will make a huge difference in the quality and how the machine cuts your, um, cuts your product. Um, I know people want to just maximize, you know, this pro and this material as much as they possibly can. But quite honestly, I've wasted more trying to maximize than creating, you know, just a tiny gap in between here. For me, I feel like it's worth it. And giving myself a half an inch around my project is also going to be worth it in the end when you cut things out. So there are my zombies. And then let me go ahead and pick one more thing here. I'll go ahead and do this bat. Maybe, what am I gonna, ooh, vampire teeth. You can see what I was working on last night here. So this is what I was working on last night. Um, I am creating some Harry Potter themed items and these were the glitters that I cut out. Um, I have my snakes for Slytherin, the logo, um, and all this kind of, these fun things. And then let's see. And where I got those images from is I just downloaded this image off of Pinterest and I traced them and grabbed what I wanted to use. Um, let's see here. What else can I do? I also have a bunch of images here that I can incorporate into. So you can, guys can kind of see come, some of the ideas of my thought process of what I have coming up. Um, let's go ahead and do this one because I've been wanting to do a badger for uh, Hufflepuff. So I'm going to go ahead and open and then I'll show you guys one more time the process. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to trace my image by using the trace tool. I'm selecting it and then I want to try and maximize the space as much as I possibly can by utilizing the threshold just for those nice clean lines. I'm going to go ahead and trace Move my image off to the side and let's fill in that color with black. Boom, done. I'm now going to copy and I'm going to paste in that zombie page that I created here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and size this up for what I'm gonna utilize it for. So I'm thinking about what I'm gonna utilize it, how big I wanna make it, and I'm gonna go ahead and resize it. And three quarter inch and 0 0.60 and 0 0.7, between 0 0.60 and 0.75 are my favorite sizes. Um, and then especially with this one having just a little bit more detail than usual, I mean, this is gonna be something where you it's okay if you wanna make it closer to an inch as opposed to um, three quarters of an inch. So in fact, I'm going to make this on the larger side just for the sake of my sanity. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and replicate. So I'm going to go to object, replicate, and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a row of three. I'm going to make a row of three and I'm not going to make a lot of these just because I want to not make this video 30, 45 minutes long. So I'll go ahead and space those kids out, create my row or my columns. We'll do a column of three, boom, done. So these badgers are ready to go. Okay, so the next step is, is this is the, the settings that I do here in Silhouette. So let me bring you close. All right, so let's go over here. We're gonna send this bad boy off. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick the material as shrink plastic. And then I'm going to switch this over to cut. And then it's gonna change this to uh, the blade of six. I'm gonna bump it up to seven. I'm going to maximize the force. Speed is one is perfect because you want it to make it a nice crisp, crisp cut. And then you wanna do two passes, trust me. I have wasted, again, that's where I've been wasting my material is I've only been doing one pass. You wanna do two, I promise it will help. You will thank me later. 
you'll go ahead and once everything is lined up, you're gonna go ahead and separate your colors accordingly for what you wanna do. So for these zombies, I'm gonna do green. For these um, badgers, I am going to do black, maybe? No, I'm gonna do gold, I'm gonna do gold badger. So let me show you guys how I get everything set up on my sheet. All right, so I have my trusty paper cutter and I also have my um, gold foil. You will see here, sorry for your crooked, one, two, three, four, five inches wide and one, two, three, four inches long is how long I'm gonna cut the piece for my mat. All right, five inches across. Four inches down. There are zombies. Don't worry, these little pieces are gonna come in handy for other things. For the badger, we're gonna do three inches across and four inches down. We're gonna go ahead, maybe I should bring you guys up a little bit. Oy vey, you guys get the concept. Three inches across, four inches down. And again, these little sheets you can use for really quick projects if you wanna just do something super quick, especially if you're making glitter. That's all I'm gonna say about that. All right, so now I have these items. Here is my mat, and this is fresh out of the Amazon box fresh. Like, we are peeling the plastic off for the first time. Ooh-wee, that is satisfying. Okay, let's line up. So we're going to, and this stuff is sticky. This is like fresh mat out of the box is like the best way to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line up the green here. I'm gonna do my five. No, that's five, five by four. So I think this, is this it? Yep, this one's it. Nope, that's not it. Oh, I'm going to probably leave all this footage here just because you guys can laugh. Everybody needs a good laugh on a good tips and tricks tutorial, shall we? And then I see some ear bubbles there, so I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to get them out. It's really not important, but, you know, there might be a crafting Karen watching. Who knows? Who knows? It is what it is. Okay, now we're going to take the gold. I'm going to put the gold right next to it. Boom. Done. And then we're going to feed this kid in the printer. Not the printer, the silhouette cutter. Let's bring you over here. Yep, I'm drinking drama juice right now. Let's go up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Turn your cutie on. Moving some stuff out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and feed this in done. Now I'm going to send this to and start cutting, but we're not going to wait for this whole thing. All right, there it is out of the cutter. Let's bring it down and I can show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so move that out of the way. Bring you down so you can see. Now, hopefully you guys can see this with the light, but that is what they look like. And they actually did pretty darn good. So what we're gonna do is we are going to weed like you would any other type of situation. And this is nice and sticky, so it is going to peel off so nicely. Slow and steady wins the race. This is what your piece will look like. Let's do the badger. Let's see how that comes out because I didn't really look and pay a close attention because I wanted to be transparent. All right, let's do this guy. Oh, smooth as silk. And then that's how much we used. And then we can go in here with our weeding tools and we can weed this or 
I have my trusty scalp, uh, my scraper and just very carefully, if you want to like pull up, you can. There's your cute little badger, so cute. And it's the perfect size for the project that I want to use it for. So here, bad color combination, but look, that's what it will look like in one of my pieces. So there you go, you guys, I am making shaker um, keychains and foam grips, and I'm going to make them specifically themed to things. So this one would be for Hufflepuff. Obviously, it's not purple. Purple is going to be for something else, but I also have some fun decorations that I've cut in other videos. I've got my cute pumpkins. I've got my ghosts with, it still need to be weeded all the way, but super cute. I've got my vampire and these are pretty big, but you guys also have to realize too that for my particular pieces, they're going to be covering a lot of real estate. So, so imagine what you can come up with for holidays and birthday parties if you want to make somebody a really cute Christmas present birthday present it's just it really adds a nice special touch and it just time and patience weeding this off the mat but you'll want it you'll want to have it be nice and sticky on the mat like this and you want to be able to you know come through here and lift off or scrape or you know I mean in any in any form weeding is going to be that necessary evil but pull them off they like to jump around like grasshoppers but look at him isn't he cute and then imagine him in a in a mold see I love it it came out perfect Alrighty, there you go. I hope that helped. I hope that gives you some insight, some encouragement. The possibilities are endless with this material. I am really excited to release some fun designs on September 18th in my Etsy shop. I will have phone grips, I will have uh, keychains. Uh, or bag charms is what I am also calling them as well. Oh wait, I wanted to show you one more thing. So. Here is another one I'm going to do, which is, I'm a big Marvel fan, a big Captain America fan, and I'll bring you guys down and show you over here on the side screen uh, what this looks like up close, but um, this is the prototype, and I really love how it came out, and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, and if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll be more than happy to help you out as best as I possibly can with the experience that I've had so far using the Cricut Party Foil. I'm going to start doing a lot more videos here on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button, the bell uh, for the notification so you know when I have posted videos. My goal is to post one fun video and one tutorial video a week. And again, I will always be posting hardcore on TikTok, but this one will give you a chance to see me more, give me a little bit more time to explain things uh, tutorial wise, or just talk to you guys and tell you what's going on in my head in regards to some of the designs I come up with, tips and tricks and techniques. But uh, I want to create a community of sharing and a community of openness. Like I'm more than happy to tell you guys what products I use, but it's really all in how you imagine, how you wanna create something, and then show the world your creations. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.